Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a quilt called Double Friendship Star. It's a very beautiful pattern. I love the patchwork stars, but there's something that caught my attention about the block right here. Let me show you on my phone. It's a little bit easier if I make it bigger. So this part right here. Now we've made a lot of blocks that are similar to that. A lot of quilts have half square triangles with a dark and a light. We've also made blocks like this where you've got two half square triangles put together to make that. But I've never made one where half of it is like this and then on this half, just half of it is like that. So I'm interested to see how the pattern has us make those. This is a jelly roll pattern and the one I've chosen is called Winter Sparkle. This is a Robert Kaufman collection. It's all wintry prints with a little bit of silver accents. The pattern has multiple sizes. We've got baby, throw, twin, queen. I'm gonna make the twin size, so I need 18 of the two and a half inch strips, a yard each of two fabrics for the star points, and two and an eighth yards of background. So here's what I've picked for the star points, those darker fabrics, and this nice light neutral blue for the background. Then we're also gonna need some borders, binding, backing, but we'll deal with that later. For now, this is all we need to get started. I'm gonna go ahead and pick out the 18 strips that I'm going to use for the patchwork. Lots of times I can't use all of the light prints if they're exactly the same color as the background. But for this quilt, some of these light prints will end up in the patchwork in the middle of the star here. And then over here, we can use mediums and darks. And once we get the patchwork made, then we can pick which parts go where. So it's perfectly fine to get a nice variety of lights, mediums, and darks here. Okay, those 18 should be great. And the only sub cutting we're going to do is we're going to cut each one in half. So I'm splitting it right along the fold here. Those are all done. The next step is to cut out the background and the two star fabrics. I can't give you all the sizes because it's not my pattern, but Cozy Quilts patterns are always so easy to follow. I just love their instructions. The cutting is all done. The next step is to take these star fabrics and on the back side of them, we need to draw a line along the diagonal. I'm using a little chalk pencil here, a white one, because my fabric is pretty dark here. So I'm just gonna draw a light line from corner to corner on both of these. Now this is not included in the pattern. This is an extra step that I'm adding, but I think in a moment, when you see why, you'll understand and be happy you did this. Draw one more line, one half inch away from your other line. So I'm just putting my ruler here, the half inch line, right on top of the other line and drawing a second chalk line. Now let's take these two and one of these rectangles to the sewing machine. Take your lighter star fabric square. This is the one that will be less prominent when the block is all done. Line up the edges and then stitch right down that diagonal. We're stitching right along the line. And I'm going to go ahead now, again, not in the pattern, just an extra step, stitch along that second line. And let's take this over to the ironing board. 
This piece gets folded over, all the raw edges meet, then give it a little press, open it back up, and take it to your cutting mat. Next, we're going to cut right between both lines. That's gonna give us a quarter inch seam allowance on both seams. So I'm a quarter inch away, and this is the piece that's gonna go in our quilt. Now, what we have here would be just two extra triangles if we hadn't drawn that line, but because we drew the line and stitched it, we've got a very nice half square triangle. And we're gonna get one of these from each of the blocks. So we're going to continue to make these and set them aside and use them for a fun part of this project later on. Next step is to take the second block and put it on the opposite corner. So the lines are going the opposite way, line everything up, and stitch it just like we did the first time. After this one is ironed, open it back up, take it to the cutting board, slice right between those two lines. So here's the block. Those are gonna be the star points. And this extra piece is even a little fancier. We've got two triangles here and a big one there. So I'm gonna go ahead and make up all of my blocks. All of our blocks are done, and those are the extra pieces. Next is to take all of these strips to the sewing machine. Take two different strips here, and they're half strips, so they're not real long. So let's take that light blue one, and then let's take this teal one that's got some snowflakes, put them right sides together, and stitch along one long edge. Now I've got little pinked edges on there, so I'm going to measure how wide these strips are before I sew, and I do this every time I get a new jelly roll. So the strip here, the measurement is from the inside, from the smallest part of the pinked edges to the smallest part there. So I'm just going to account for that when I stitch, and my quarter inch then is coming from the very smallest part two over there. I want to make sure I don't stretch either strip as I sew. And I'm just going to go all the way down the edge here. Then I'm going to open this up and finger press the seam towards the darker color. So I'm going to kind of pull it like this hold the top and then draw my fingertip, either the nail or the pad of your finger, right down that seam. So this makes it very easy to iron afterward. So I'm gonna go ahead and pair all of these up and stitch them all together. They're all pretty flat from the finger pressing, but I do like to give it a dry iron and then some steam. And then each of these goes right back to the cutting board. And I'm lining it up on one of the lines here. And I'm going to cut it into segments. These are two and a half inch segments. So I'm gonna go all along here, cut this up. Generally, when I'm cutting up strip units like this, I don't cut them one at a time. I will stack them up. So I'm gonna line this up on a line. Then I'm going to take another one and I'm gonna move it up and put the top of it on a line. And then I'm gonna take a third one. It depends how many layers you're comfortable cutting. So I'm just gonna keep stacking these all the way up my cutting board. I can put them about two inches apart. And then I don't have very many layers going at the same time, but when you come to cut, Look how many you'll get all at once. So I think I've got five or six here and I'm getting five or six at a time with every cut instead of just one. And that will save a lot of time. 
We're back at the machine with all of the strip units that we just cut up. I'm gonna take two, any two, and I'm going to sew them together. So I'm gonna pick two where I've got the seams nesting. So that one's going down and that seam allowance is going up. Makes it very easy to match that intersection. And we're just gonna sew them together in pairs. So I'm gonna chain piece these. I'm just gonna take two like this, take the next two, sew them together, and I'll keep going till I've used them all up. These little guys don't even really need to be finger pressed. I just peel it open and give it a little bit of steam. They're very easy to get flat. We have all the pieces we need to start building our quilt. And earlier I mentioned that it didn't matter if you picked light or dark jelly roll strips because you could pick where they're going to go in the quilt. And now is when you can do that. So these pieces here, they're going to make our star. These are going to go in the middle. So you can pick out the ones you like best to go in the middle here. And the pattern will tell you exactly how many you need of these. I'm gonna pick ones that have lighter pieces to go in there because the rest of them are going to be used to make blocks like this. And here is where we might want to have a little more contrast. So that block would be better off in the middle and then we'll pick a darker one for here. So let's take all of these pieces to the sewing machine. Each block gets two of each kind of pieces here. Two plain, two patchwork. It doesn't matter which way you spin them. You just have to sew them together like this. So I'm gonna go down this side here and I like to keep it on the machine and slide my other pair over. stitch that second pair. I'm going to finger press my seams toward my solid block because that's the way they want to go because there's a seam allowance in there and it tends to want to go that way. If your background is really really light then you're going to want to press it the other way so you don't get any shadowing showing through. Now it's very easy to sew these together because the intersection matches. Press this seam to one side, and that block is done. Everything is now stitched and ironed, and we can lay out the quilt. The first row starts with a single block like that, then part of a star, a center of a star, and I can kind of do the next row at the same time because this is gonna be sticking up that way, and these guys, are gonna go in there, you're already starting to see what that star is looking like. And the more I lay it out, the more we will see them. All we have for the whole quilt is this narrow row. So this is a narrow row here. Then we've got a wider row. Then we've got that same narrow row that we had there. So we're just gonna re be repeating those rows the whole way up the quilt. And it's pretty easy to see if you have them correct because you can see the stars forming and then you can see these diagonal lines of the patchwork blocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it all laid out. There's the entire quilt laid out and I always like to stand back and look down the diagonal to make sure everything is in place. It's a lot easier to fix it now than to fix it after you've got the whole top done or if it's all quilted. There are four borders that are gonna go on. We've got the background, and we've got a blue, another of the background, and then a nice big one. This is the same fabric that's in our star points. So I'm gonna get all the borders on and get it loaded up onto the quilting machine. There's one more thing I want to do before I finish up the patchwork for the top. 
Remember all these extra blocks we got, the bonus blocks? I'm going to sew these up into patchwork and I'm going to use them on the back side of the quilt. So I'm going to make a row of patchwork that's going to go between the two pieces of the back. So first I'm going to take these and make a pinwheel, oops, let's see, a pinwheel block like that. Then I'm going to take these and make another pinwheel block. So there's just two blocks and I'm going to use up all my squares to make these blocks. Then I'm just going to alternate these two blocks and make a big row of patchwork. And that row will get sewn right between the two large pieces of backing. And that will end up somewhere near the middle of the quilt. And I think that will make it very interesting. The quilt is all loaded up and we need to pick a thread color. I've picked out some silver colors because there's silver metallic accents in these prints. I've got white. I don't normally quilt in white. I just don't seem to like it very often, but I think it might look really good on this quilt. It won't show in the background and it'll show a little in the patchwork. Blue, show a little, not much there. This is another option. So if you want your quilting to show in the light areas, that would be good. And then the silvery gray won't show much in the background. It'll show a little there. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with the white. It'll look kind of like frosty iciness and that will look good on the patchwork. For the quilting pattern, I'm going to use this feathery one called Vicky's Feather. I like it because it reminds me of a storm and we have all those snowflakes in this pattern and I think this will look really good. The Double Friendship Star Quilt is all done and there's so many interesting things to look at. I think it's called Double Friendship Star because it's like there's two stars. It's like there's a light blue star, then a dark blue star, and they're just turned a little bit. They're right together. So if you look at it on the diagonal, you can see the stars going up. You can see these pathways of patchwork going up. It's got four borders around it. This makes the patchwork float, then these frame it very nicely. On the back side, you can see that quilting there, that feathery quilting, it's very nice. It doesn't show up here much at all, it just blends right in, but I like the swirliness of the quilting. Now on the back side, remember we put that extra patchwork row. So let me flip it all the way over here. If you had this on a bed, you're going to have this whole row of patchwork coming down the bed and it's not exactly in the middle, which I think looks the best. So we've got this a little bit offset and look at how much more interesting the back is with that row of patchwork in it. A very fun quilt to make. It didn't take that long and these pieces here, which I wasn't sure how we were going to piece, they were a lot of fun to make. I've got one more thing to share with you. I enjoyed making the quilt so much I made a second one. This is made with the exact same collection of batik prints from Robert Kaufman, but it's in the traditional Christmas colors, green and red. I used a holly pattern for the quilting here, and you can see it a little more because I used the dark green thread. And take a look at the back. That extra row of patchwork here, it almost looks like peppermint candies. So I'd be interested to know which quilt do you like better? Traditional reds and greens, or the frozen colors in the blue one that I made first. Thanks so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. It's always fun to get a pattern and then to cut the fabrics and see 
how the quilt is going to turn out. Now, at the end of every video, we do a giveaway. Today's giveaway is a quilt called Gridlock. We did this some time ago in a video. It was made with a jelly roll. It's a big one. So this was done with a Moda group of fabrics called Starflower Christmas. It's not real Christmassy because it's so multicolored, but it's just a beautiful pattern. It's very easy to enter our giveaways. All you have to do is click the link below this video that says giveaway. And you just put in your name and your email address, and we can send this to a winner anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our tutorials and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.